The emotions in a young girl's head have different abilities and must fight to save her mind from complete destruction. Today we're going to recap the story of the movie, Inside Out, from 2015. Inside a baby's mind, a fairy-like girl looks at a panel in front of her. She touches a control and makes the child smile. Suddenly, a ball of light comes out of the display, and the little fairy pushes it through some gears, which triggers the system and the child laughs even more. A blue girl called Sadness arrives to get in the way, making the baby sad. That place is part of Riley Anderson's mind, and the fairy is joy, one of the feelings that controls the girl's emotions. After the baby grows up, the controls are improved and fear appears to help with the control, preventing the little one from exposing herself to dangerous situations and getting hurt. When Riley tries to eat, disgust shows up and won't let the child eat broccoli, so she throws all the food in her father's face. An emotion called anger takes control and makes the little girl have a fit of rage after discovering that she is going to run out of dessert. On the other hand, Bill Anderson, the girl's father, uses the airplane spoon to get his daughter to calm down and eat the vegetable. Riley has many happy memories, one of the best being when she scored her first ice hockey goal. In the girl's mind, it is possible to create a new aspect of her personality through each memory, so the island of hockey, goofball, friendship, honesty and family were made. Riley has a nice house and lots of friends, but she is forced to leave everything behind when her parents move to a new house in San Francisco. The girl is disappointed when she sees her new home for the first time, because the place looks haunted and there are even perished animals inside. All the emotions start to take over at the same time and Joy tries to dominate the control room, so Riley comes up with the idea of looking for the moving truck to organize her room. She goes to her parents very excited, but the car hasn't arrived yet. Still, she remains happy and starts an impromptu ice hockey match using her stick and a puck made of paper. The young Anderson skillfully dribbles her father, and then her mother joins in. However, the family is interrupted when Bill receives a phone call and leaves the house. At that moment, Joy sparks an idea for the girl to eat pizza. When she arrives at the nearest pizzeria, Riley realizes that there is only broccoli filling, the food she hates the most. When emotions place a memory on a happy family trip, Sadness touches the memory and makes it sad. After that, they put the memory on the mega railing and the girl gets sad again. Then Joy realizes that Sadness has touched the memory again, and made the memory fall to the ground. The little fairy tries to distract her friend by giving her some manuals to read, so they can put Riley in a good mood. While the other emotions complain about how things are going, Joy tries to motivate everyone to work in the control room. The girl's mother brings sad news, the moving truck will take a few more days to arrive. Faced with this situation, Riley prepares to act in anger and fear, but the woman says that her daughter's smile is the only thing keeping them on their feet, so Joy manages to interfere with the controls and the girl smiles. Later, all the emotions are put to rest and the little fairy watches young Anderson's dreams. In them, the girl arrives at her new house, which is full of ghosts, and is greeted by a mouse and a bear who offer her broccoli pizza. When she realizes it's a nightmare, Joy interferes and puts on a happy memory of the Anderson family ice skating. The next day, all the emotions are running high as it's Riley's first day at school. The train of thought appears in anger prepares to take only the good thoughts. What's more, sadness is placed inside a circle that she can't leave, so it won't interfere with her memories. After listing all the things that could go wrong during the day, fear realizes that one of them is going to happen. At school, Riley is introduced by her teacher, who forces her to give a speech to the class, as she is the new student at the school. The young woman talks about how good it was living in Minnesota, where her family played ice hockey every weekend and had fun, until she moved to San Francisco. At that moment, the girl begins to feel sad and all the emotions realize that sadness has touched yet another memory. When they try to act and remove the memory from the place, Riley cries because the blue girl is tampering with the mind control panel. A base memory, which is one of the most important, is colored blue, indicating that it has become sad, Joy tries to fix the memory, but knocks several spheres to the ground and suddenly the islands are disconnected from her mind. At the same time, Sadness touches another memory, which is sucked up by the little fairy. Both try to capture the memories, but fail and are pulled out of the control room by the tube. The pair speed down the pipe and quickly arrive at a place full of memories arranged on giant shelves. Joy realizes that these are long-term stored memories. What's more, the islands are all switched off. Sadness says that Riley is without her base memories and without joy in the control room, so the girl must not be happy at all. During dinner, Jill Anderson, the girl's mother, tells her that there is an ice hockey team in town, so her daughter can join the team and play again. At that moment, inside Riley's mind, one of the emotions, known as disgust, tries to act to make the girl happy, but she remains discouraged. 
Her mother tries to talk to her and asks about school. In the control room, fear takes over to answer, so the young girl remains sad. Bill also tries to cheer up his daughter, but the girl gets stressed when she lets anger take control of her mind. A red alert is triggered in the control room and Riley has a fit of rage, so her father demands that she go up to her room. At the same time, joy and sadness must cross a precipice via a narrow bridge. They mustn't fall off, as they will be forgotten forever. Bill goes to his daughter's room and tries to play pranks, but the young girl doesn't mind, and in her mind the goofball island begins to tremble. Sadness and the little fairy, who were nearby, run frantically to avoid falling in with the debris. Little by little, the island collapses over the cliff until there is nothing left. Joy decides to look for a path, but her companion argues that she could get lost because the long-term memories occupy huge shelves that form labyrinths so large that no one can see the edge. Sadness got this information from the manuals, so she knows the way back to the control room. However, she is too sad to continue walking along the path, so the little fairy begins to drag her along against her will. Along the way, the pair meet metal workers who collect memories that aren't so important. Riley is jealous of her friend because a new girl has joined the Minnesota ice hockey team. What's more, the new girl plays well. After the young Anderson receives this news, the island of friendship crumbles in her mind. After that, Joy comes across a pink elephant who has put various memories in a bag. The moment she tries to talk to him, the animal runs off into the maze of shelves. He tries to hide behind the memory shelves, but the little fairy manages to find him. The weird creature's name is Bing Bong and he is Riley's imaginary friend. The elephant says he knows a shortcut to the control room and decides to guide the emotional duo there. In fact, he's an undefined animal, as his body contains parts of a dolphin, an elephant, a cat's tail and he's made of cotton candy. Bing Bong claims that he hasn't been remembered by Riley for a long time, so Joy tells him that she will use a memory with him when she returns to the control room. The animal gets emotional and starts to cry, causing candy to fall from his eyes like tears. Soon after, the elephant tells her that he knows a shortcut to find the train of thought, but Sadness believes it's a very dangerous route. Riley eats lunch alone at school, and in her mind the workers close the door to the secret passage. Then everything inside the shortcut starts to become abstract, so Bing Bong and the girls take on geometric shapes and their body parts disassemble as if they were toys. Even so, they try to run, but the plane of the place becomes two-dimensional. When the group finally manages to get out of the secret passage, the train of thought leaves. However, there is still another station where the locomotive will stop. The group must pass through Imagination Land as quickly as possible to catch their ride. There is a forest full of French fries, the city of trophies in the clouds, which they use to float through the air. The group crosses a river of lava and arrives at the Castle of Cards, where they meet Riley's imaginary boyfriend. Meanwhile, in San Francisco, young Anderson is preparing to play ice hockey with the city team. In her mind, emotions believe that there is a serious risk of the hockey island collapsing too. In this way, fear brings back some good memories of the sport to encourage the girl. During the game, the young woman begins to lose control of the puck and misses a shot. In this way, the hockey island is gradually destroyed. In the girl's subconscious, Joy and her companions try to return and realize that everything is being destroyed by the metal workers, including Big Bong's rocket. A tractor carries various items with the rocket to the dump. The debris is thrown over the cliff before the elephant can retrieve his belongings. Sadness notices the animal's sorrow and tries to console him. In this way, it manages to get up and point in the direction of the station. Before Joy can ask how she managed to cheer him up, the group realizes that the train of thought is already waiting for them. In the control room, Fear tries to leave through the pipe of memories, but he can't, because no emotion can leave the mind. Anger has the idea of making Riley run away to Minnesota, because that's where the best base memories occurred. Fear believes that they should wait, but Anger claims that all the memories will be destroyed if they don't act quickly. At that moment, the train of thought stopped moving, as Riley began to doze off. Faced with the situation, Joy believes that they should wake her up through a dream, so the group heads to the sector. They enter one of the doors, where there are several people working in a dressing room. When the dream begins, an actress plays Riley's teacher and asks the girl to introduce herself to the class. Suddenly, the other students say she has no teeth and one of the workers throws teeth at the camera lens. Then one of them says that the girl has no clothes on, and the camera points at her feet, which are clad only in socks. Just then, Joy and Sadness enter the room in a dog costume and start barking. Even so, Riley is still asleep, so Bing Bong throws balloons at the set, but to no avail. Suddenly, the costume begins to tear and one of the light fittings falls. The light illuminates the dog with half its body separated, which creates a horrifying scene. 
almost enough to wake Riley up. One of the cast members calls the police and tells them that there are intruders on the premises. At that moment, an officer arrests Bing Bong, who is carrying the base memories in his bag. The elephant is taken to the subconscious, the place where everyone is trapped when they cause trouble. Joy and Sadness manage to get into the place, where they encounter Riley's worst fears, such as broccoli, the stairs to the basement and Granny's vacuum cleaner, which almost catches them both, but they manage to hide. Then they find a path littered with candy papers. The trail leads to Bing Bong, who is locked up in a prison made of colorful balloons. However, the cage is on the belly of a clown, who is fast asleep. Joy climbs up the creature's body and takes the bag with the base memories. She then tries to release the elephant little by little so as not to wake the giant monster. Before leaving, they decide to scare Riley so that she can wake up, so the little fairy pinches the clown's nose in order to wake him up. The creature begins to walk in a frightening manner and chases the trio of friends. During one of the dreams, the clown appears, causing the girl to wake up quickly. At the same moment, the train of thought starts moving, so Joy and her companions manage to catch a ride. In the control room, Anger decides to test his idea, he makes Riley search for bus tickets to Minnesota. Young Anderson sneaks into the kitchen and grabs her mother's credit card while she's distracted by the phone. Suddenly, the woman turns around, but the girl has already escaped. At that moment, in Riley's mind, the island of honesty collapses, which causes the train of thought to plummet off the platform and fall close to the precipice. The first wagon begins to pull the rest into the abyss, but some workers from the site manage to save the people inside. At that moment, Joy discovers that Riley has decided to run away, so all the islands are being destroyed. As a result, the group has to run to the family island, as it is the only remaining route to the command room. Sadness believes that it is too dangerous to go down that road, because the path is also about to collapse. On the other hand, Joy realizes that they can climb up the pipe of memories, so they run there while the family island collapses. When the little fairy enters the pipe, she realizes that Sadness can't go with her because there's a risk that she'll touch the base memories and make them sad, so she closes the passage and leaves her friend behind. However, during the journey, the base of the pipe breaks in half and Joy plummets into the abyss along with Bing Bong. At the bottom of the cliff, she finds herself in the middle of an immense darkness, in a place full of erased memories. The elephant looks for Joy, who realizes that he is beginning to be forgotten by Riley, as his arm is gradually disappearing. He finds the little fairy trying to climb the mountain of memories, so he tells her that they will both be forgotten. Faced with this, Joy begins to cry and when she looks at one of the memories she realizes that when Riley was sad because she lost a field hockey match, her friends and family came together to console her. In this way, she understands that sadness is necessary for the young Anderson's loved ones to help her regain happiness. The little fairy remembers Bing Bong's rocket, so they start singing and find the car in the middle of the wreckage. The elephant takes off and the two sing the song, but just as they are about to reach the top of the mountain, the rocket loses power and falls to the ground again. The pair persists and gets higher and higher, but the vehicle continues to lose momentum and falls into the abyss. Even though his body is fading faster and faster, Bing Bong tries one more time and encourages her friend. During the ascent, he jumps out of the rocket, making the car lighter, and the little fairy reaches the surface. When she reaches the top, Joy realizes that her imaginary friend has fallen behind, waves to her and disappears from Riley's mind. At the girl's home, her parents are looking for her. Jill decides to call her daughter, but the girl refuses and the family's island comes crashing down. Joy meets Sadness, who runs away from her at all costs, knocking over a box of potato chips in the middle of the road, and the little fairy manages to jump the hurdle. The blue girl then climbs onto a cloud to escape through the air and drops several tears on the ground while her pursuer just watches her walk away. In the control room, the control panel stops working and begins to darken, then the emotions realize that all of Riley's feelings no longer work. Joy finds young Anderson's imaginary boyfriend and has several of them created from the factory on site. She puts them in the magic bag, then uses a bladder and makes the air coming from it push sadness away. The little fairy takes out all the imaginary boyfriends in her bag to make a makeshift tower. Then she climbs the tower to the top and pushes off into the abyss, so Joy lands on a trampoline and then manages to catch the blue girl who was on a cloud in the sky. The two head towards the control room, where they bump into the glass and slip into the abyss. However, Sadness manages to catch her companion before she falls. Faced with this situation, Disgust begins to provoke Anger, who gets angry and releases a powerful flame from his head, which they use to cut a hole in the glass and rescue their friends. When the control panel is almost completely dark, Joy asks Sadness to take over, because only she can reverse the situation. When she touches the control buttons, 
The panel returns to its previous state and Riley decides to return home immediately. After that, Joy lets her friend touch the base memories and they turn blue and sad. When she meets her family again, the young Anderson begins to cry and tells her parents that she just wants to go back to Minnesota because she doesn't feel at home there. The three of them hug and memories return to the girl's mind, so the family island is restored. What's more, the control panel is restored and a new button called puberty appears, along with a huge list of new words for anger to use. Riley goes back to playing ice hockey and before entering the rink, she bumps into a boy and embarrasses herself. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.